Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Dave Vishen, Business Development Representative here at Equipsoft. In today's webinar, by, so by utilizing anything from clipboards to handheld devices, uh, you will learn how you can improve your dealership's productivity, profitability, and cash flow with Equipsoft's integrated solution to mobile field service technology. Our webinar will run approximately 30 to 45 minutes in length. Although we're pretty flexible with our time, uh, it will include a presentation, a short demonstration, and questions and answers at the end. So now I'd like to introduce our customer account manager and today's presenter, Oliver Lomaca. Oliver is one of the original architects of Equipsoft, has been with us for nearly 15 years, and has over eight years of experience in the equipment management industry. So with that, Oliver, if you're all set, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dave. Hey, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for coming. So why don't we get started? What is mobile strategy? Mobile strategy encompasses all these different components. We have customer service, we have efficiency, we have technology, we have cash flow, and we also have competitive advantage. But in order to accomplish that, we have to ask ourselves, what is our mobile strategy or what is your dealership's mobile strategy? So let's take a look at that in regards to what is your typical strategy today based on a paper-based mobile system. What you see here is an example of what a general dealership um, service process looks like. For example, we might take a service call um, sometime on Monday afternoon or morning, and then as we go through the week, you can see all these different processes that are required in a paper mobile a paper-based mobile system. Generally speaking, if we're lucky, we might be able to invoice the customer the same day. Generally speaking, you invoice them during the week, and most likely, and this happens for a lot of dealerships, they do it at the end of the week or perhaps a week or two later. The problem with that, of course, is there's a lot of delays in between. There's a lot of cost involved, and it's not a very productive and efficient process. There is a lot of things involved in the work and process calculation. Your cash flow obviously is a little lacking because you get your money later on because you're not invoicing your customers fast. Now let's take a look at what a wireless mobile strategy look like and what Equipsoft can offer you with our product uh, in regards to mobile field service. So this is an example of what a day in the life of a, 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 a Equipsoft customer that's currently using mobile technology. Monday, same idea, you take a call from a customer. It goes through the process of the work order being assigned, the field technician entering uh, the order or entering time and material against it. The bottom line is it gets invoiced the same day once that work order is completed. So the idea here is that with wireless mobile strategy, you're really replacing the paper process and having everybody involved in getting that work order efficiently and automatically to the technician so they can efficiently get you the information in regards to time and material associated with that work order and have the customer invoice as soon as possible. Now let's take a look at some of the benefits of going mobile. I'm not going to go through all of these and I'm just going to keep it open here so you can read through uh, some of them. But basically the goal is, of course, customer satisfaction, reducing cost, and streamlining operations, making you more productive and efficient. You've heard all those cliches and buzzwords before. But bottom line is, as a former accountant myself, one of the things that I, I'm always looking for when managing a company is to make sure that I understand where my money's coming from and how I can get that cash flow coming in. Of course, notwithstanding that, you want to make sure you've got correct work in process reports. You've got correct productivity reporting for your technicians, so you make sure that you're building them as efficiently as possible. So that's what mobile technology brings to you, because unfortunately, if you were dealing with paper, you're not getting that information until they produce that paper to you. Of course, they can always take a, make a phone call and let you know that you know they've got eight hours worth of work today, and they can allocate that to a work order manually back in the office, but obviously that's a lot less efficient. Now, let's take a look at the next slide here. So what is uh, the mobile strategy that we're about to see today? It's really Equipsoft talking to a product called Expand IT. So what you will see is a demonstration of the interface between the two products. 
We're not going to spend any time in Equipsoft today. We'll just assume that the, a work order has already been created in Equipsoft. And then the next thing we need to do now is to demonstrate to you how we can take those work orders created in Equipsoft, assign them to a technician, and then show you what the, that looks like from a dispatcher's perspective. And then once that work order has been assigned to a technician, what does that look like from a technician's perspective so they can see what work orders are assigned to them and how they enter their time and material against it. Of course, along the way, you're going to see other functionalities such as how do we add signature to it? What about parts and van inventory? What about equipment history? What about attaching files such as taking a photo of the equipment or the machine and so on? So we're going to go ahead and actually see the software now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop up Equipsoft here. Uh, for those of you who have not seen our product, this is Equipsoft version 2013. What you're seeing here very quickly is our home page or our role tailor centered client home page view of what a dispatcher in the service uh, customer service department would look like. We're not going to go through this and create any work orders. I've done I've pre-created all those work orders. So if you can see, I've got a bunch of work orders that need assignments, so that's what we're going to do. So why don't we jump right into um, the software now and actually start working with it. Let me just expand this very quickly. So what you should see right now is the planning or graphical user interface dispatch board for Expand IT. This is completely integrated with our database. So why don't I just go over this with you and show you the functionality behind it. What you see here is an Outlook style, cal Outlook calendar style interface. So on the left hand side you will see um, all the different service technicians and it's in a calendar view. If I place my mouse pointer on top of um, one of the assigned work orders you can see a little bit of detail. Of course I can drill down on that and I'll do that momentarily. But what's important to note here as well is that I'm able to group all my technicians based on the departments that they work under. So you can have a grouping for your or a pool for your field service techs as well as your shop techs. So although we're talking about field service today, it doesn't mean that you can't um, manage your shop techs using the same interface. At the top of the screen here, what you find interesting is that we have a bunch of statuses that, that are color coded. So you can imagine it's a lot easier for us to be able to say that this particular work order is signed to Heather Craig. She's already started, whereas some other work orders are, have just been appointed but haven't been accepted or haven't been started. So visually, right away, you can tell which work orders are ongoing versus the ones that are on hold or not yet started. What's interesting to note, again, here as well is that from here, you can see that I also have um, a group of work orders that have been assigned to the group called service. However, as you can see, we have a bunch of work orders that have been assigned to individual service technicians. This section here is what we call a pool of work orders. So imagine if you have a bunch of um, work orders that you have yet to assign to specific technicians. Imagine you have technicians out there on the road that strictly do emergency calls or breakdown service. Once they've completed those work orders, it might be less efficient for them to pick up the phone and call you up and say, hey, I'm free. Um, do you have any other work for me to do today? What the job pool can do for you is the ability to, is that you would give them the ability to be able to grab those work orders on their own and assign it to themselves. I will show you momentarily how we do that. At the top of the screen here, of course, you can filter your dates to show you specifically what group of period that you want to see. So that's fairly straightforward. You can also use the filter here at the top to filter the list to show you only all those work orders that are assigned to Amanda or perhaps work orders um, with regards to specific equipment record, serial number, and so on. So we won't go over that today, but I just want to make sure that you understand that because that is something that's very similar within Equipsoft so you can find different work orders, who they've been assigned to, and work orders if there are multiple work orders for the same equipment record. Now, if I wanted to see the more details behind each one of these records, I simply double click on that record, and you can immediately see uh, sample data or simple data associated with that. 
From here, what's interesting to note is that I can actually force the status of these work orders depending on you know who's working on what. I can also change the start date um, and start time. I can also change the duration of time. I can delete the work order or assign it to someone else, and let's actually do that. If I wanted to assign that work order to someone else, let's say Amanda called in sick today, I've assigned this work order to her, and I want to assign this to Heather, I can simply grab that and drop it into Heather's bucket, and that work order will now be assigned to Heather. As you can see, within this graphical dispatch board, you also have the ability to do drag and drop. In addition to do drag, doing drag and drop, as opposed to opening up the record and saying it's, it's now going to take two hours instead of one hour, you can go ahead and expand that to make it longer or shorter, depending on the duration of that work itself. From the graphical dispatch board as well, you can right-click on a work order. By right-clicking on it, it also gives you the ability to edit it the way I showed you previously. You can also add coworkers to it. What does that mean? Oftentimes, our customers are asking us, Oliver, it's great that you can create one work order in Equipsop, but is there a way for us to be able to create that work order and assign it to multiple technicians? That being that multiple technicians will receive the same work order on their tablet, and they can enter their time against it. So the answer now is yes, we are able to do that by adding the co-worker. You can also show that in the map, which we will show momentarily. So if you want to know where in the map that particular customer is located, you can click the map um, integration, which I'll show you later on. In addition, other things that you might find very useful is the ability to be able to lock the time in the user. One of the things that our customers have been asking for in the past is the ability to be able to say, a customer just called, there's only a window of time that they're available that you need to be at their facility to fix the specific machine. Can you make sure you get it done between 1 and 3? By locking that time against the work order, against the technician, you cannot move it and no one else can move that. In addition, you can also lock it to a user, so the user has to do that work and they can't assign that to someone else. Because there's also a feature behind the scene uh, that allows you to be able to transfer that work order and have a technician say, hey, can you work on this one instead? In addition, of course, I can also change the status here too, so that I don't have to drill down on the record and change the status whether it's been uh, started or not, and so on. By the way, for any existing customers that are on the line today, those statuses are also mapped uh, within Equipsoft, so certain statuses in Equipsoft, regardless of what those codes are, will map back into expand IT here so that it would show you what the statuses are. Now let's take a look at mapping integration with the dispatch board. So what I'm going to do here is just going to minimize this. Generally speaking, when you do this, you probably most likely have multiple uh, monitors open. So you, what you would be doing is monitor number one, or TV number one, you would show the graphical dispatch board calendar style. And on another um, television set or monitor, you would see the map of um, your uh, territory or service area. What's interesting to note here when you're looking at the mapping integration is that if I place my mouse pointer on a couple of these work orders been assigned to Maureen Tim, watch what happens to the mapping on the right-hand side. Automatically, you can see the flag pop up telling me that that's where that cu customer is. And it also tells me that this right, no, right now is currently on hold because yellow is the color code for on hold. If I click on this other work order, it will pop up on the screen where that particular customer is located. What you'll also find interesting here when you're looking at um, the, uh, the, the map uh, version of uh, the dispatch board is that it also tells you if there are, what other jobs are available nearby. Of course, I'm not just focused on, on one state over here, so I've, I've kind of expanded to show you the entire map of the United States. But so you can see, you will see what available jobs are out there that are close by. Why is that important for you? It's important because if you know that the technician is currently on this, at this location, you can easily say, OK, well, we have other work orders that are in the pool that needs to be assigned to someone, and this person is the closest person uh, within the vicinity. In addition, I have it turned off right now because I'm really the only one working on my machine or my, my, my system, but you will also see the users nearby, So, which means that if you have a situation where um, a technician needed a part, you can easily go in here and see which other technicians are nearby 
so you can let them know that they can go ahead and meet each other, of course, to share parts. So very, very important. And if you hadn't noticed yet as well, you will notice that uh, the flags itself are also color-coded, so you can quickly see uh, this flag right here represents that the work has been started or it's been paused, yellow on hold, et cetera, et cetera. So that basically is the first part of the demonstration today, showing you really the graphical dispatch board that looks very much like your Outlook calendar. Um, I've shown you uh, drag and drop functionality. I've shown you how to um, uh, expand or compress time. Um, I've spoken to you about um, the pooling of work orders. I talked to you about the statuses uh, within the work orders or within the dispatch board. I also showed you the mapping interface. So what I'm going to do right now, which is the next step, is actually show you how we assign a service technician to a work order. Very quickly, one of the simplest ways that you can assign a work order technician is really to just uh, grab this uh, work order from the pool of work orders that are assigned to the pool and literally just hand that over to a technician. So I'm not going to worry about which day here. I'm just going to drop it in and stick that to a, a technician. The other thing that you will also notice is we also utilize resource skill sets. What that means is that there are certain skill sets that are required to be perf to, for a technician to have with regards to maintaining or fixing a machine. So we won't allow you to, to do that unless, of course, um, that technician is certified. In this case, it's just a warning to let me know, of course, I have a, an option not to reassign that to someone else. So I want to make sure that you're aware that you can do that. From here, you can see that the status right now is appointed because it's great it's saying it's appointed. It's appointed because the technician hasn't accepted it yet. In this case, I'm Oliver, so I'm going to show you how that's done. In addition to dragging and dropping it from the pool, let's just, for example, say that you have not allocated any of those work orders to the pool because you don't necessarily want technicians to just keep grabbing them. You can go ahead and click the search button here. What that will do is give you the ability to be able to look at the search screen. The search screen is very, very important because it allows you to be able to look at work orders that have planning, uh, planning that are required, current and future scheduling, new, anything that just came in from the last time that you've been using it. So if there are any new work orders come in, you're not guessing which ones haven't been assigned. So typically speaking, I like to show all, just to show you all these different work orders. From here, you can see whether or not they've been assigned to a pool. In this case, a pool or group is a service department or whether they've been assigned to a particular technician. So very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this aside so you can see it. I'm going to grab work order number 83, for instance, and I'm just going to drag that, and I'm going to drag that and assign it to myself. Once again, it's telling me, do I really want to assign this? And the answer is yes, I do. Once that's done, it's been assigned. Once again, to remind me that I'm not certified, I'm just going to close this out. And now you have a work order assigned to me. Now that, now, now that that work order has been assigned to me, the next logical step, of course, is to show you what that looks like from the technician's perspective as far as what they would receive, what they would see on their tablet. But before I do that, I also want you to be aware of that uh, within um, the product itself, there's also internal messaging. So you don't have to actually launch your email or any other application. If you really want Oliver to know that there is something uh, that he needs to attend to or a work order that is high priority, you can also message them internally. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the software now, leaving the dispatch board and taking a look to see what that looks like. The type of client that I'm going to use right now is a web browser version of the client. Um, Using a web browser, what that means is, of course, you will need constant Wi-Fi connection. Um, however, you can also use a client-based application, which means you actually install an application on the, uh, uh, the notebook or, or, or tablet computer, um, and that gives you offline capability. Uh, basically, what that means is that you can um, uh, work on a work order and see that work once it synchronizes onto your tablet or computer and not worry that you can't enter time and material against it just because there's no Wi-Fi. Once it finds a Wi-Fi connection, it will automatically sync back uh, to the database. So what you see here is uh, the, the graphical interface. Um, it looks very similar if you're using the actual client application as opposed to web. 
Um, the reason that these buttons are fairly big, um, it's designed specifically that way because, of course, uh, the real estate on notebook computers or tablets are fairly small, uh, so it's easy for the technicians to navigate with the, uh, uh, throughout the different work orders assigned to them uh, and be able to easily click buttons. So what you see here are a list of all the work orders that have been assigned to me that, as a technician. Here are the work orders that were assigned to me to, uh, yesterday, and you, here are the work orders that were assigned to me just now. As you can see, um, if I scroll down here, so there's the number 83 that I just assigned to myself. So I forgot about that. I didn't want to click too soon. Here it is. It's been appointed to me. If you want to accept the work order, I just want to show you that you can do this. Some of you might not necessarily want to do this, but accepting the work order just says that that technician has acknowledged the fact that, yes, I can do that work because uh, you don't necessarily want to guess that, hey, this particular work order that they're working on originally today is going to take an hour to do. Maybe it'll take a lot longer depending on the problem. So by them accepting it, it will send the status back to the dispatch board saying, yes, this uh, technician has in fact accepted it ergo or therefore they have the time to complete that work order. So what I'm going to do right now um, is um, actually before I m move further to show you um, how to work with these work orders, let me just show you something very quickly. One of the things that I mentioned to you earlier is about the job pool. Remember earlier I said if a technician, for example, does only break or, uh, or order uh, breakdown or emergency order work as opposed to plant maintenance, you know, they always work on the same number of uh, work orders per day or per week. There's a job pool option here that if you click that up, you will see that there's got a list of all the different work orders that are in the job pool for that particular department that that particular technician belongs to. So simply, the technician just simply goes here, puts a check mark against one of these records, click accept, and that work order will automatically be assigned to that technician. So it's a very efficient way, of course, of assigning work orders to themselves without having to call you and asking for additional work. So let's take a look at some of the uh, existing work orders here, um, and then we'll go back to number 83. I just want to open up number 73 here just to give you a quick intro because I've put additional information already in preparation for this meeting. If I go ahead and click that record, what you will see are the details behind that work order. You can see the stuff that are important, of course, such as the address information, uh, this is the ship to information, by the way, as opposed to the um, the, uh, the sell to information. I can start, uh, stop or pause the work itself. So by starting it, the clock starts ticking. It starts saying, you know, you started at 10 o'clock. If you stopped at 12 p.m., that means you worked for two hours. It will automatically enter that time for you against the work order, so you don't have to manually enter that. Although what I'll do is I'll show you how to manually enter a time against the work order. So let's go ahead and just start that just so you can see it's been started. If you recall earlier, you saw in the dispatch board that when I click, um, when I show you the dispatch board, had statuses on it to say that a, a work has been started on a particular work order. This is the reason why, because you've started it here. From here, you have the details, some details regarding the equipment record or service item number. You've got some messages here that I've entered to communicate back and forth against the comments of the work order. Here's some invoicing information that I've entered specific to what I would like to have printed on an invoice. Uh, you can also see here that you have some fault uh, or symptom or resolution codes. Uh, we are replacing that. It's currently in progress. Uh, for existing customers, you will see job modifier and component code appear there. On the lines tab, it will show you um, all the time entry and parts entry that you have accounted for against this work order. Under the time button, item button, I'm sorry, this is your ability to be able to enter time manually if you so choose to do so, as well as select parts that you want to assign, including quantity against this work order. What's interesting to note here is, if you recall earlier when I was showing you the dispatch board, I told you about adding technicians against or a co-worker against a work order. So you're really taking a work order that, let's just say, has one segment or one machine on it and assigning that to multiple people. However, some of our customers are asking, well, what about if I don't necessarily want to assign that work order to multiple technicians? Let's say you are a company that does installation, like doctor installation. During that construction installation process, you might have one work order that you've created, 
and you have one line item that it says install the dock door. Um, if you're familiar with that uh, installation of dock door, it has, um, if you're not familiar, I'm sorry, it has the process of digging the ditch, cutting the wall, installing the restraints or leveler. You don't necessarily want to create four or five different line items to represent all those tasks. In addition, you can have multiple uh, installers working on the same process. So what I'm about to show you here is your ability to be able to say, okay, what if Amanda is another person that should be adding time against this work order? Perhaps Olamaka is the foreman or the leader of the group. We don't necessarily want to give, the, give a tablet computer to Amanda, but we want Oliver to be able to enter time for Amanda. Watch what I can do here. I can go ahead and type in Amanda's name here. And I can add her to one of the favorite or most used resources or technicians against this work order. And I can add her to that, her time against that work order. Without her doing it herself, I go to the line tab here. You can see that that um, line item has been added as an hour worth of Amanda's time. So as you can see, we've solved the dilemma that we that we were experiencing before with it then Equipsoft by allowing you to do that outside of Equipsoft. Okay. So as you can see, you saw me enter um, uh, labor against it. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how to enter uh, parts against this work order. So let's go back to item. And within this uh, uh, tab right here, I can uh, 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 enter a partial part number. Or if I wanted, I can enter the entire part number if I already know what it is. So in this case, I'm just going to enter a partial part number. So I'm going to click on search. What that will do is just show you the list of all the part numbers that have the descriptions DED or the part number that has DED on it. So in this case, what I want is an oil filter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a one to that. You will also notice that it also is tracking what inventory van location has been assigned to you. Of course, that's only going to show you the location of warehouse code that's associated with the van that's been assigned to the technician working on this work order. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to click Add. And once again, you can see that that line item has been added to that technician. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly show you uh, that work order that I've created earlier. I'm just going to double click that, which is number 83. Again, just an example. Here's that work order. Once again, you can click Start. You can also look at the map to see where that uh, customer is located via Google Map. So you can see it actually launched, launched Maps google.com to show you specifically where that um, particular customer is located in the map. I promise you I would show you that map integration to the work order. So here it is. So if a, a technician is looking at it on a tablet, they know exactly where they need to go and you can use Google Map for that. Just a quick FYI, and I'm gonna, not going to go into any details at this point. Um, the software is also capable of being integrated to the GPS so that when you're looking at the map earlier, you can see where they are in the map if they're traveling. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to go back in here and let me just finish up this work order number 73 that um, I was looking at earlier. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish that job. One of the things that you, you can also do with regards to this work order um, is to reschedule jo that job using the finish function. One of the things that um, uh, our customers have been looking for in the past is to be able to allow the management of the work orders with the technician as opposed to uh, with the dispatcher. What does that mean? So imagine if this work order is actually not yet completed. So let's say it's already 6 o'clock in the evening and there's a couple more hours to be done. Wouldn't it be great for the technician to be able to say, you know what, I want to go ahead and pause this work. However, I do want to transfer all the time and materials that I've entered against this work order back into the system so that, um, A, they can run their work and process very effectively overnight if they have a dashboard or KPI related to that. But more importantly, I will it will allow me to move this work order to the next day. So from here, you can go ahead and complete the uh, close the job completely so that the work order is gone. You can complete the job, OK? Um, but you, but essentially what that means is to send the job back to the office with the modification, but not necessarily say you're, you're finished. It's just you want to send the, the data back. 
In addition, you can also send the data and continue tomorrow. So it sends the data back to the office. By continuing tomorrow, it will move this work order to tomorrow automatically. Or you can say, do the same thing, but schedule it for a different day. Let's say today is Friday. You're not necessarily going to be working on it on Saturday. So you can move it effectively for Monday. In addition to that, you can also click on the signature panel here. You can type in your signature, and you can save that. You can also print the job. As an FYI, um, all the printing will be done back home in the office. We have event notification available in our software so that if you do want this uh, work order, once it is fully completed, to be emailed to the customer with their signature, the event notification within the database will do that for you. This, the software here, will not do that for you because we want to do the checks and balances in the software. In addition to that, you can also attach, um, I'm not going to bother closing this out, but I will just go back to the job tab here. You can also attach pictures or images. So if you are working um, on a machine and you want to take a picture, you can take a picture, attach those pictures against the work orders, and those pictures will be attached back to the work order similar to the comments. Just go back to my presentation here. That is it for the presentation. Um, we will open up the floor to any of your questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat board or um, Dave, I forgot what the keystroke is to unmute your phone so that they can ask their question verbally. No, no, I'm here. I'm here. No problem. I've got it, Oliver. So yeah, we did receive some questions. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, Brad asks, uh, does the status update automatically as the tech completes or, or begins the work order? Yes. Okay. The process with that is um, there's actually a button that's missing. It's being added right now. I didn't want them to add it yet because I haven't fully tested it yet. There's a button that says start travel as well. So if you want to start uh, counting the travel time, you can do that as well. Or the, the button that says start work, you can click that. Pause work will pause it. You can set up the time so that it would increment every 5 or 15 minutes or every 30 minutes, depending on how often you want to do that. So the answer is yes. OK, very good. Um, Rod asks, uh, will this work on a smartphone uh, or tablet, be it Droid or iOS based, uh, or only a Windows device? Currently, it's available only on Windows device. Um, the reason they, it was done that way is because a lot of other dealerships run diagnostic software. And those diagnostic software work primarily on Windows device. So if a technician has a device, it complements each other. Um, there has not been any talk with regards to iOS or Android device. But what I want to make sure everyone's aware is it will run on device except that it will run in the browser mode or online mode. So you're not installing an application to those devices. It will run as a, an online mode. So you need constant connection. Um, and of course, we would have to just paint the screen. So the screen would, um, would look a little smaller on a smartphone. And that sort of answers Rod's next question, I think, where he asks, uh, what platform is the offline client available to run on. So that, that would be um, uh, sort of similar to what you just mentioned a minute ago, right? That's right. OK. Uh, one more question here. Uh, let's see. It appears that service techs would mainly use the expand IT and not, oh, is this, I can't tell in the window here, Oliver, if this is an answer or a question. No, this is a question from Tyler. I apologize. Uh, it appears that the service techs would mainly use the Expand IT and not log in to the main Equipsoft ERP. Will service managers, dispatchers uh, have to log in to both Equipsoft and Expand IT and go back and forth uh, doing some functions in Expand IT and some in the ERP? No. Um, well, it, that is your choice or option. Um, the dispatcher, by default, would be living in this environment. Um, as you can see, they, uh, as you saw before, you can assign those work orders directly to uh, the technician. The, as, once it's been assigned to the technician, what I failed to mention earlier is that it will actually update the work order back in Equipsoft saying that that 
work order has been assigned to a technician. So you can you will have visibility for that because not every user um, in the company will be looking at the dispatch board managers might be looking at um, the work orders to see work in process and to see what's been assigned to which technician. So that will communicate back. But it really is your choice. But the main uh, goal of the dispatch screen is the assignment and graphically be able to see visually where they are along with integration with the map. But you have the option. OK. Uh, another question from Brad. Does the app make it easy to take a picture and attach it to the work order? Yeah, taking the picture, because it is a tablet computer or uh, a, a laptop, if it's got a, 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 a camera, um, it will take the picture. Um, it will put it into default a picture folder. And when you click Attach File, it will allow you to just drill down to that folder and attach that uh, image. It's no different than we, we would today if you were trying to email a photo you took on your smartphone. And that's not limited to the tech or service manager, is it? No, it's not. OK. And let's see here. Next question, who puts the parts on the orders? Uh, the technician will. Okay. However, let me answer that in more detail. Um, from the device itself, the technician has, obviously, the ability to be able to assign the part against the work order. However, if the office, whoever created a work order, knows that there is a part that the technician needs, they can enter that part against the work order in Equipsoft, and that part will automatically appear against the work order in the device. As far as the pictures being taken, Oliver, is it via tablet or external camera, or uh, where Using are they the attached? Tablet. Using the tablet or okay. the smartphone. And they are, they're easily attached in Quipsoft? Uh, yes. They, they will get attached like a linked attachment. So if you're in Equipsoft and you're in a specific record, there's a button here called Links. So it will link it against that work order. Perfect. Uh, Michael asks, can we drill into the jobs from the dispatch board? No, you cannot. OK, and how is a co-worker defined in Equipsoft? It's a resource or a technician. Uh, Edward asked, uh, do I need another piece of software for the map interface, or is that built in? It's built in. And how does it work with GPS? With GPS, uh, the quick uh, answer is that if you are using a tablet, computer, or a smartphone, it works off of your uh, machine's location services. So that will constantly ping, provided, of course, the machine is running, um, and send that information back to the database. It's, it's really similar to if you, when you're running an app, so it knows where you are. If any one of you are familiar with, um, I forgot what the app is called, and if you're using an iPhone and Windows has the same thing, uh, it, those lot location service allows you to be able to look for a person. It's just paying the machine or the smartphone. Uh, so we'll do that for you. Additionally, it can also interface with an external device like a, an actual Garmin or um, a TomTom -tom, uh, device. Uh, it can it also interface with that. Uh, the advantage of using those external devices, by the way, is that the, those devices are a lot more uh, specific as far as the mapping goes. So if, uh, for any one of you who've used mapping uh, using your smartphone or tablet computer, it's really within probably a kilometer. An actual device like um, a Garmin will, is very specific to within like, you know, literally 100 meters. OK, I think that that wraps up the questions that we received. Um, again, everyone, if you uh, have further questions for us, uh, I believe that Oliver had put up the contact information for both he and I uh, on his uh, presentation there. Uh, so with that, on behalf of Oliver and the entire Equipsoft team, we sincerely thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Uh, if you have any other questions about Equipsoft, we would be happy to assist you in any way we can. Uh, so with that, thanks again, everyone. We hope you join us again in our ongoing series of webcasts, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.